Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning. Um, thank you, Dr. Awan, for the introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, SMMTC for inviting me to conduct this um, online uh, workshop yeah, on uh, interactive remote learning using Nearport. Um, actually, this is uh, repeat sessions that I have uh, conducted uh, last week with uh, UTLC, but it happens that uh, it was on a Wednesday day, so perhaps some of you uh, didn't able to uh, join last time. So uh, welcome to this session. But if you have already joined the session that I have conducted uh, with UTLC, so uh, it's going to be like a repeat session. So. Uh, just uh, stay back and relax and you can actually just uh, explore uh, yourself. But if you have uh, further questions, then uh, you can uh, ask me later. Okay, uh, before that, can we do a sound check? Is my voice clear? Okay, doctor. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, perhaps uh, for those who haven't uh, scan the attendance you can that, uh, do that uh, again later uh, that means we'll share the attendance uh, screen later because uh, i'm about to share my uh, screen yeah Okay, can you can you see my uh, screen, uh, Sherry? Yes, doctor. Yes, all right, great. Okay, so uh, if you can see my uh, screen sharing, uh, can you please uh, grab your smartphone or open a browser on your laptop or computer or desktop and go to join.newport.com and enter this code? You can also actually uh, download an app yeah, from the um, App Store or Google Play, um, the Nearport apps. But if you don't have that yet, just go to your browser, uh, open up uh, Chrome or whatever uh, internet browser that you use, and then key in the URL join.nearport.com and enter the code UNZQG. Can you do that? I can see uh, a few people already joining in. Okay. Um, so if you if you can join using the Nearport uh, website or apps, you can. See the screen on your device, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this is actually I want to start uh, the workshops today with a simulation, so that uh, you can actually experience the remote learning. Yeah. Uh, so in this sessions today, uh, you will be quote unquote the students, and I will be the lecturer, kind of. Yeah. So uh, later uh, and along the way, I hope that you can uh, reflect on your own practice and also uh, start thinking of how you can actually use uh, Nearport in your own teaching practice yeah, by um, having this experience. And then uh, later, after the simulation, uh, we will do the demonstration. Okay, uh, perhaps we can uh, wait for others to join. Uh, we already have nine people joining in the, the session, the Nearport uh, session. Okay, I hope uh, more people 
can come and join. Uh, if you if you don't want to join, that's fine, but um, you will miss the experience of uh, involving or being in a remote learning, yeah, in a synchronous uh, remote learning. Okay, maybe we can uh, wait for others to join. We have 11 already. So if you can see on my uh, screen sharing, okay, there's 11 people joining in here. You can see my, my cursor here, okay? And because I haven't start the lesson, so uh, it will appear on your screen uh, to wait, right? And then uh, for those who have already key in the name, okay, you can uh, you will be bring uh, straight to this uh, slide. Well, actually, I'm the one who will be controlling the view of the slides. Yeah. Okay, so we have twelve people already uh, joining in. Okay, uh, I can see from the chats, uh, people asking about uh, attendance. Uh, don't worry about that. You can uh, scan the QR code uh, later after the session. Yeah, the admin will share uh, the QR code attendance again later. Okay, uh, if we can start. So today, uh, our workshop is on interactive uh, remote learning using Nearport. Uh, I think I don't have to uh, introduce uh, myself. Um, Dr. Awan has already <laughs> mentioned my name just now. Um, oh, before that, I also want to uh, welcome participants from uh, outside UM. I know that uh, there are a few uh, people uh, joining from outside UM. So if you can please uh, leave your names and uh, institutions at the chat so that we can have a record uh, for our uh, training yeah thank you so much for joining okay so uh, for today's workshop uh, we will first start with a simulation of remote learning using nearport okay that's what we are doing currently so this is actually the simulation where you become the participants or the students, yeah, quote unquote, and I'm the instructor. So along the way, you can um, start thinking of how you can actually design your own teaching and learning, yeah, using Nearport based on the activities that uh, we will be uh, experiencing in this uh, simulation. Okay, and then after the simulation, uh, hopefully we can um, done with the simulation in around 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, and then uh, in the next uh, hour, we will do the demonstrations or the hands-on where we will look at how we can actually design instructional materials for conducting a synchronous or asynchronous remote learning using Nearport. And for today's workshop, uh, I also base my workshop on the remote learning guidelines that I have prepared with the um, academic uh, development, yeah, HEA. So that can be accessed from HEA websites, or you can just go to the link that I provide here, bit.ly slash Neopod UUM. Okay, so that's... Uh, kind of like modules there. So after this session, you can always refer back to that uh, module uh, if you want to come up with the Nearport lesson. All right, so uh, this is what I like to do normally uh, to start my lesson with or for any training that I conducted. I will start with a poll and I would like to know the existing uh, knowledge or I want to gather some preliminary knowledge of my participants or the students. So you can do this also later in your design. Okay, perhaps you want to know what is your uh, students 
uh, current understandings of the topic that you want to discuss on that particular day, or if you want to ask them for some other information to start with. All right, great. Okay, uh, so please, please uh, grab your smartphone. If you just joined this uh, workshop, please go to join.nearport.com and enter the code UNZQG. Okay, the rest who have already joined in, please uh, take part in this poll and let me know how would you rate your current knowledge about Nearport. Yeah, join.nearport.com and the password is UNZQG. So you can still join even you if you just are joining the session, yeah? So that's what will happen to your student as well later when you conduct this uh, remote learning. Yeah, you can always uh, give their password to the students and they can join in. It's just that they will miss the first part of the uh, slides if you are if you have already started. Okay, can I have the password again? Yeah, the password is UNZQG. Okay, so we have uh, people um, taking part in this poll already. Okay, so as an instructor, we can also hide the student's name. Yeah. So later, if you have, if you are conducting the remote learning, okay, the Nearport lesson, uh, you can hide the student's name by clicking the button here, yeah, on, uh, on the bottom right, yeah. Hide student name. So when you hide student name, the names of the student will be hidden, okay. So it it really depends on how you want it to be. So uh, sometimes if we have like. Uh, we want to ask for certain questions that you want everybody to really, really take part and uh, don't want them to feel shy or whatever. So we can hide their name. But if you think that uh, everybody is okay, then we can just uh, show the name. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason for why we should uh, show or hide the name. Uh, perhaps along the way, uh, I will talk about this uh, a bit further Yeah, later. Okay. So um, if I can share with you the, the finding of this poll, okay, actually now I'm kind of like uh, pushing to your uh, device the results, yeah? So from the charts, we can see that 33.3% uh, uh, have moderate knowledge about Nearport, okay, that's good. 27.8 have heard about Nearport, but never use it. 22.2 uh, didn't answer. Yeah, 16.7% know nothing about Nearport. Okay, so this kind of like uh, indications or preliminary informations, yeah, for the instructors or the lecturers uh, to start the lesson with. So from this uh, poll, I can see that. Uh, most of you have moderate knowledge about Nearport. So I think that that's a very good uh, start so that we can uh, go uh, easily with this application, inshallah. All right. So um, I can unshare this back. So if you are doing this with your students, Perhaps you want to uh, wait for everybody to respond first before you did do the sharing. <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, that's just an example of how we can actually uh, do some kind of activity in a Nearport lesson. Yeah. So after I know the uh, preliminary information about today's participants. So now I want to start the workshop. All right. So what is Nearport? 
Okay, uh, well, actually, Nearport is a web 2.0 application. It's an online uh, application that can be instructional platform. Yeah, and in this uh, application, it allows us to merge slide presentation. Okay, for example, if we have PowerPoints or PDF uh, slides, yeah, uh, we can merge those slides with formative assessment. Yeah, and we can also have dynamic media for interactive learning experience. So I have give the example at the beginning of the session, which is we have the poll. Yeah. Okay. And this is the interesting feature about Nearport where we can actually find or create interactive lessons easily. Okay. So what it means is that uh, we can create lessons in Nearport from the scratch. Yeah, meaning that uh, we design, uh, we create uh, a slides yeah, in the Nearport itself, or we can actually use existing lesson from Nearport library. Okay, Nearport has a library that uh, compile Nearport lessons from other educators, and we can actually use those lessons. Okay, there are some paid uh, lessons and some are free. Okay. But uh, for today's sessions, I think this is one of the um, interesting part that everybody would like to know how we can create lesson from existing materials. Okay, for example, we have a uh, PowerPoint slides or, or we have a uh, PDF files. Yeah, and I, we want to um, transform that PowerPoint uh, materials or PDF slides into interactive lessons using Nearport. Okay, so we can do that. And other than that, we can also create lesson using Google Slides. Okay, but for today's workshop, I will concentrate on how we're going to create lessons from existing materials such as PowerPoint or PDF slides. Okay, so later when we go to the application, you can see the drag and drop uh, function here. So uh, that's actually an indication of it's very easy to do this. Okay, you can just upload your existing PowerPoints or PDF files or images, and we can create uh, the lessons. Yeah, in Nearport easily. All right. Um, the next feature that I want to uh, talk about is. Nearport allow for synchronized learning yeah, during live instruction. So what we are doing today is the live instruction. Okay, I'm conducting a synchronous lesson using Nearport and it is um, supported by web conferencing platform. Okay, so for today we are using WebEx. But if you want to use other online conferencing tools such as Zoom, uh, Google Meet, Skype, or other applications, uh, you can do that as well. So uh, that's what we are interested on, which is how we can actually uh, create synchronous lessons or synchronous le learning okay, with our students. Okay, because uh, during this um, COVID-19 MCO, uh, we understand that we have to conduct our uh, teaching and learning remotely, and perhaps we want to have some um, blended uh, approach, okay, where some part of the lesson will be synchronized, live lessons, and some part of it will be asynchronous. Okay, so talking about asynchronous, we can also do uh, self-paced lessons uh, with our students using Nearport and that can be um, accessed by the students uh, anytime and anywhere. Okay, perhaps later after this uh, workshop, you want to try the asynchronous lesson. Okay, yes, you can. If you want to try the asynchronous lesson, you can just go to join.nearport.com and use the code CPF. O E. Okay. C P F O E for the asynchronous. Okay. So you can have the experience of how uh, Nearport support both uh, synchronous, 
asynchronous lesson. Okay. Okay, I've shared the code uh, at the chat. So perhaps later you can try that. Okay, so for the asynchronous lesson, uh, we can use the same lesson that we created for the live lesson or we can have different lesson. Okay, and we will uh, share the lesson using our uh, WhatsApp group or perhaps you want to put it in your uh, learning management system such as uh, we in UUM here, we have uh, UUM online learning. So you can just share the code or the link to the lesson with your students in the UUM online learning. And don't forget to uh, put the activity uh, at the title so that that can be count as um, activity in the blended learning. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, we can also uh, use uh, Google Classroom. Okay. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, Canvas, Schoology, or um, Edmodo, yeah, those are the learning management systems that can also uh, support um, self-paced learning. It's just a matter of uh, sharing the code yeah, or the link to the students. Okay, uh, I will show you later in the demonstration how we are going to do that. Okay, next, I think uh, this is one of the uh, interesting parts that I like most about Nearport, where using Nearport, we can actually have uh, interactive and uh, formative assessment, yeah? Uh, interactive activities and formative assessment in between the slides. So we have start just now with a poll. And after this, we will have other activities uh, such as um, open-ended questions. Okay, we can have a collaborate board. Okay, if you look at the picture here, actually a collaborate board is uh, almost similar with what we uh, if you are familiar with Padlet, yeah, uh, it's almost similar with Padlet, where we can have uh, sticky notes, uh, students uh, putting in their comments or share pictures and images, okay, using uh, the Padlet. But using Nearport, we can have this collaborate board under one roof, meaning that you don't have to um, close the Nearport apps or minimize it or unshare the screen and then open up for Padlets on other or other applications. Everything, or not, not, not to say everything, but most of the activities can be uh, conducted in Nearport. Um, same like the poll just now. Okay, uh, I know that sometimes I also use like um, when I use Microsoft PowerPoint for the uh, slide presentations, I will like uh, share uh, poll app, uh, apps to do the poll. But using the Nearport, we can do that in the Nearport itself. Okay, so I think that's that's more easier and less uh, technical. Okay, other than that, we can also have like um, uh, game-based uh, learning. Uh, that's quite new to Nearport actually. Uh, and then we can also have quizzes, yeah? Or other uh, activities such as um, flip cards, memory cards, fill in the blanks and so on. Okay, but for today's sessions, I will be more interesting, uh, uh, interested to share with you uh, some of the formative activities that I think is uh, more suitable to be conducted with uh, higher uh, learner, higher education uh, learners, such as the poll, open-ended questions, uh, quiz, and collaborate bots. Okay, so uh, I hope that you are with me for the uh, previous slides, okay, because now I'm about to do a quiz. Oh, sorry, it's not a quiz. Uh, this is open-ended questions, okay? Uh, perhaps you can share with me, based on what I have shared in the previous slides, how do you think that Nearport can support you in conducting remote learning? Okay, so uh, this kind of activities that you can also do with your students, okay, uh, using Nearport. Okay, for example, you have started uh, talking about the topics uh, for the lessons, okay, introduce them with some concepts and so on. Okay, and then you start or, or, or you pause and doing an activity. Okay, so this is another example, activities that we can have with our students. Okay, can I have uh, some feedbacks and a response here?
Okay, normally uh, we should give times to our students uh, for them to take part in the activities that that we conducted. Yeah. Okay. Um. Actually, this is just the 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 normal things that we do in our face to face class. Okay. Uh. If we conduct a lecture. Okay. Uh, after we discuss several topics or several concepts, uh, we will pause and start uh, talking and asking our students okay and ask for their feedbacks and responses but in a traditional face-to-face -face class normally we are not able to uh, get responses from everybody okay for example if we have like 30 students in the class if we allocate like five minutes for a discussion like this we are not able to get everybody's feedback but using this nearport we can first get their feedback in a form of writing up okay and then later okay we can uh, scan through the responses okay as the instructor we can scan through the responses and then we can actually pick uh, one or two responses and talk about it in a further detail So we have uh, some feedback and responses here. Normally, if I conduct a class uh, with my students, I will wait and uh, ask for everybody to, to give their response. But since this is just a uh, training, uh, I won't do that. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's really uh, up to you. If you would like to give your response, uh, you are most welcome. But if you don't want, that's fine. OK. All right. So uh, as an instructor, I can uh, quickly scan on the responses here and if I feel like oh this uh, this is a very interesting um, response that I want to talk in for the details with my uh, students so what I can do is actually I can uh, click this share button so that it will be pushed to everybody's device before that perhaps perhaps yeah if you want to show the student's name so that you know whose uh, feedback or whose response this so you can call for the students to talk about it yeah so for example i have here fast uh, and she talked about oh, her response is newport can help me create interactive activities with students good for formative assessment so normally if we are with our own students we know our students so we can just call them for example okay first please uh, can you talk a bit more detail about what you mean by this okay that's, that's just an example but but yeah first if you want to to grab the microphone turn on turn on your mic you can also uh, talk about this yes no okay or maybe someone else want to ask about this you can also uh, turn on your mic and ask a questions or give feedback okay so that's what we do with our students normally right okay so um that's the beauty of Newport, where we can actually catch our students attention to what we are going to talk about so in this example, uh, when I share this response, I'm kind of like uh, forcing or pushing everybody to just look at this particular response. Yeah. So we can talk about it and students won't be distracted by other responses. OK, so if we are, we are done with uh, this one, we can just unshare and then perhaps we want to talk about something else for example here we have Hana Mijan yes makes online class more lively I can share this and then start discuss about this perhaps we can call uh, the students or the participants Hana if you want to talk about this please uh, grab your uh, mic and maybe you want to talk about this in detail okay or maybe other students want to ask what do you mean by yes makes online class more lively so they can do that yeah because we are conducting um synchronous lesson okay anyone to want to uh turn on the mic and say something yes 
No? Okay. Um, no? Please, please, please. I feel like I'm talking to myself, just myself. I would like to hear uh, some voices. Uh, Dr. Naz, I, I, I mean, I don't know what to say about the responses, but I think it's, it's amazing. Like if you have a big class, so everybody stays attentive and while you share their answer on screen, they will be attentive and then you will ask them others to answer because like the, the biggest challenge of bigger class. At one point of time, and I think this is a great tool to engage everybody and and they can also, you know, talk to each other. So wonderful. All right, thank you. Uh, that's Dr. Nikki, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can recognize your voice. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nikki for the response. Yeah, so that's kind of examples. Actually, actually, I'm just giving examples today. Uh, we are not uh, we are not discussing about this topic uh, in detail because uh, this is not uh, class yeah it is just a, a training session okay but that's kind of examples where we can actually engage our students uh, with us yeah with the lessons of the day okay so by doing these kind of activities uh, we can grab their attentions to that particular response and we can talk about it in further detail okay that's what we are doing just now okay so uh, i think we are done with the Sorry, Dr. Nas. Um, yes. My name is Sakia. Okay, I have done this uh, before on face to face, but I haven't done it um, online uh, from for online learning. Um, uh, does uh, because um, does it uh, requires a lot of bandwidth for the students, or is it just you know, uh, is, is adequate for students with low bandwidth? Well, I think uh, if your students have uh, quite a low bandwidth. Uh, you can ask them to download the apps because when they are assessing it from the apps, uh, the size has been reduced, okay, suitable for the apps, yeah, mobile apps. So it's going to last bandwidth other than uh, uh, assessing it from the browser, okay. But there's a tips and tricks to reduce the bandwidth. Uh, I, will, I will suggest that later when it comes to the demonstration part. Okay, for example, uh, when we create the lessons, uh, perhaps we can reduce the bandwidth by not having uh, videos, uh, lots of images and things like that. Okay, but for the activities, that's fine. Right. Thank you, thank you uh, for the questions. Okay, so that's kind of examples again uh, that we can actually uh, do during the Nearport lessons. All right, so I think we are done with this one. Uh, we go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, that's what we have been doing just now. Uh, we actually embed interactive activities in between slides. Yeah, if you uh, still remember at the beginning of the session just now, I start with a poll. Okay, so this is uh, another lesson that I have, uh, I show here. But uh, we can see from the lesson here, the slides, the first slides, and then the second slide is a poll. Okay, and then the instructor can uh, continue with the lessons or the concepts of the topics of the day. Okay, and then pause and do open-ended questions like we did just now. Okay, and then we can continue. And in between, we can have or we can insert uh, another uh, activities. Okay, I will show that uh, later. All right. So what kind of interactive activities or formative assessment that we have in Nearport? Okay, what we have are time to climb. Okay, this is actually quite new to uh, Nearport. Uh, this is a gamification um, applications. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, quizzes or Quizlet, this, this is uh, or Kahoot, yeah? Uh, this is kind of uh, gamifications that can be embedded into Nearport. But for today's workshop, I'm not going to show this one. Uh, perhaps uh, next session if we have, inshallah. Okay, and then we have open-ended questions. Uh, we have done that just now. Okay, and then others are matching pairs, quiz. Uh, quiz here is uh, in the form of uh, multiple choice questions, yeah? Okay, and then Flipgrid. Uh, if you are familiar with Flipgrid, uh, it's a video-based applications where we can have 
uh, learning activities, um, get feedbacks or responses from our students in the form of video. Uh, that's Flipgrid. And it also been embed in Nearport. Okay, this is also quite new um, to Nearport. Okay, and then draw it. Uh, draw it is um, free drawing. Yeah, where you can uh, ask your students to draw uh, some basics uh, drawings, like uh, maybe I don't know. We we will try that later. Yeah. Okay, and then collaborate. Uh, this is what I said just now. It's almost similar to Padlet. Yeah. Okay, and then poll. Uh, we have done this at the beginning of the sessions. Okay, and then we have fill in the blanks and memory test. But um, for me, I'm not really using matching pairs, fill in the blank and memory test because uh, it's not really suitable uh, with my um, learning outcomes and uh, my students. Okay, but it, it really depends on how you design your lesson. If you just want to have like a bit of uh, fun with your students, but you want them to actually uh, remember certain uh, concepts or definitions, uh, you can do the matching pairs and memory test. Otherwise, I would uh, suggest you to do uh, open-ended questions, uh, quiz, collaborate, and poll. Okay? All right. Mm. We come to the quiz part. Okay, I hope that you are with me uh, in the previous slide. Okay, I can I will hide the student's name here so that uh, you will feel much uh, comfortable to do the quiz. Okay, uh, there's only two questions here. This is just uh, examples. Yeah, so don't worry so much. Uh, just try to answer the questions so that later I can show you how it's going to be if it's correct or incorrect and what kind of activities or more engaged learning that you can do with this uh, kind of quiz in Nearport. Okay, I'll give you some time to, to try to answer this. Can you share the slides later? Well, you can go to the uh, asynchronous lesson, CPFOE. That's where you can get the uh, slides or the lessons in an asynchronous mode. And you can do that uh, like until end of this month. I, I share that lesson until end of this month, yeah? Okay, please, please um, try this because I think this is a very good uh, experience where you first experience how it's going to be when you conduct uh, remote learning with your students. Okay, so you can get the feeling of how your students will, will um, you know, respond to what you will be doing in the Nearport lesson later. Right, uh, still 50% no answer. Please, please. Don't worry, don't worry if it's right or wrong. I won't show the, the student's name. Don't worry. Okay, maybe uh, another 10 seconds. Dr. Nas? Yes. Uh, if I join the asynchronous. Newport now, will my name uh, be redundant in the current Newport? Like, you know, like quick place is sometimes you can have like one student uh, with two names. Sometimes it happens in quizzes. So, will it happen with Newport now if I join the asynchronous Newport uh, at this very moment? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you, uh, are you joining both the synchronous and the asynchronous? Uh, not yet. So, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> Okay. So, well, yeah. actually, it's a different lesson. Okay. okay. The lesson is what we are doing now. It's one lesson. Okay. And the asynchronous lesson is a different one. But I, uh, use, the same, I use the same material. So, you, you will see like uh, similar. But actually, it's a okay. different lesson. Okay. okay. So Thank I you very much. Later. Yeah. I will show later uh, the report of each lesson where we can see uh, the names or the participants of each lesson. But yes, okay, sometimes, you. sometimes uh, your students might be experiencing um, uh, network problems or things like that, and they might be uh, leaving the lesson. Okay, They might left the lesson before you end the session. 
and then they can join it again using the same code and when that happens their name will be redundant but the activities that they join for example um, they have joined the first poll and then the second open-ended questions and then all of a sudden uh, no connections or disconnected from the lesson okay so she left the lesson okay and then she joined it back okay when she joined back we are in the quiz already okay so her name their names will appear twice but we can see that she already joined the first and second activities and then another name for the next activities so we the participation yeah, of our students. Don't worry about that. Okay. Can we remove uh, if it's, if redundancy happens like that? Can we remove one of the names from the same students? Normally, I won't remove because their records will be like the first and second activity in the first name, the third and the fourth activity perhaps in the second name. So you have to combine those okay. activities later. Yes, right, thank you. Technical, technical uh, that we have to deal with. Glitch. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the questions. All right. So, um, if we can share the score of the quiz, okay. I know, I know some of you still haven't joined, but that's fine. Um, I just want to share the the, the outcome of the quiz. Okay, so if you look at your own device, it will show your score out of two. Yeah, for example, on my own device, I, I actually uh, joining, okay, as a student as well, because I want to have a look at what is uh, on your screen. Okay, so on my uh, mobile, on my device, it showed you scored zero out of two because I'm not answering. Okay, but on your device, perhaps your score is two out of two. And some of you perhaps get your score is one out of two. So that really depends on your answers. Okay, so that's very personalized to your own device. Okay, and what we can do um, after we conducted a training, we can actually discuss on the quiz or the questions directly okay for example here i can just click on uh, one of the students and then we can have a look at the questions again we can discuss about it so if you find that oh, many of the students can't answer this so there might be something wrong and you want to discuss about this topic or these questions further so we can do that yeah so for example, for question number one, um, okay, so yeah, this is the correct answer. We can edit the contents of the uploaded PowerPoint slides in Nearpod. No, you can't do this, yeah? Because the question is, which of the following is not true about Nearpod? Okay, I haven't mentioned about this actually, so you get it, yeah? So because I talk about this, we can create our own lesson in Nearpod. And I also talk about, we can add interactive activities in Nearpod. And we can use Nearpod with video conferencing. Yes, those are the answers. And this is the incorrect answer. Okay, so these students get it right. And we can actually uh, discuss this in detail. Okay, and we can go to the next questions if we want to uh, discuss in further details. Yeah, for example, Nearpod can support the following activities as app. Yes, uh, Nearpod can do the word cloud generator like uh, Mentimeter. Okay, if you are familiar with Mentimeter, uh, normally, we, we like to, to have a Mentimeter in between uh, our lesson as well, right? But um, for Nearpod, no, we can't do the cloud generator, but we can do open-ended questions, we can do online quiz, matching pairs, and other uh, activities that I have mentioned just now. All right. So that's kind of examples of how we can actually embed quiz in our lesson. Okay, so I hope that by now you can start like thinking, oh, for my next lessons, I want to have a quiz after I talk about this particular concept and so on. Okay, 
So that, that's what I hope. Okay, so later when we do the, the designing of the lessons, uh, we can do that easily. All right, so we're done with the uh, quiz. Okay, for the next slide, uh, actually, I want to show you an example of how we can actually um, share internet contents, yeah, online contents in Nearport. Okay, but for this one, I'm giving uh, the instructor can't control the browsing of the students. So you are free to uh, navigate your own site that I share here. Okay, so can you try that? Okay, so if you go to your uh, device, you can actually uh, navigate on the contents of the website to look at uh, the pricing guide or the features of Nearport. Okay, so actually this is, I just want to share about uh, the Nearport um account so once we register for nearport we will get the silver account which is free account but using that uh silver account we can actually do lots of things that i have uh show you just now okay um it's just that uh actually in silver account you are not able to do the asynchronous learning but but the good news is during this uh covid 19 pandemic yeah uh, Newport has been generous enough to uh, let uh, silver account users to also conduct a synchronous lesson. Okay, so please uh, take this opportunity and try it and use it uh, with your students while it's free. Okay, like uh, for me, I'm actually a gold account user. Okay, so uh, I can do a lot more. Uh, but I think uh, silver account is enough, okay, uh, to do the synchronous and asynchronous uh, lesson at this moment. All right. Well, actually, um, I got the gold account just uh, last week when I received a redemption code. Yeah, actually, I've been uh, granted as a uh, certified Newport educator. And because of that, I received the redemption code and I, I am able to upgrade my account for a gold account for six months. All right. So there are things that, um, that we can actually uh, try with Nearport. And yes, along the way, there's always a room. Uh, there's always an opportunity to upgrade for a better account. For example, last time when I uh, started using Nearport, uh, at that time, there's a referral uh, program, yeah? So meaning that when you refer other people to join uh, Nearport using a referral code, yeah, from your account, so once you reach the, the maximum, the minimum numbers, I think 10, 10 at that time, uh, you can also uh, get the upgrade version, okay? So we hope that uh, the program is still on so that you can uh, try and explore and perhaps you want to introduce it with uh, to your other friends and you can get uh, redemptions and upgrade your account okay all right so i hope that you have done browsing the 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 internet or the the website that i showed so uh, in your own lessons perhaps you want to share with your students uh, some internet, uh, some websites, blogs, or perhaps articles that you can uh, get access from the internet and you want them to read or go through the, the lessons or the materials, okay, uh, from their own device. Okay, so we can do that. Or perhaps you can also do a sharing of uh, YouTube links. Okay, so you share the YouTube links to everybody's device. So meaning that they can have a look on their own, okay? Rather than you show it here on the screen, okay? Because that will uh, increase the bandwidth, okay? But if it's uh, been sent to everybody's device, just in a form of link, so if they have a better connection, they can just go to the link that you provide and they can have, uh, they can explore the sites or the contents on their own.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nuliana. Okay. All right. Um, next. Okay, so next, uh, I'm going to show you on the collaborate collaborate bot. Yeah, uh, this is what I said, uh, almost similar to Padlet. Okay, so normally, as an instructor, uh, you will be asked to uh, whether you want to approve students comments before they are posted, or you, you want just them to, to post it. Yeah, so I will say no, so that everybody can just post. Okay, perhaps you want to uh, take this opportunity. Uh, to drop your questions or feedback here. Okay, you can also insert image. Play around, have fun. Okay, so you can uh, share your thoughts here by clicking here on the space here. Or you can um, click the image button here to upload an image. You can search from the Google. Okay, or upload from your own device. Okay, so perhaps we can think of uh, what kind of activities that we can do with our students using these uh, collaborate features. So, for example, if we want uh, to discuss about uh, particular topics or concepts, then we say, okay, uh, I want everybody to um, give your own definitions or what do you understand about this concept? Or perhaps, okay, can you uh, find pictures that relate to this concept? Okay, things like that. Okay, so that's that's kind of examples that we can um, do with our students. Yeah, we can also uh, perhaps ask our students to uh, share mind maps of the particular concepts or topics that we discuss. Okay. Okay, while waiting for others to uh, respond or uh, drop your questions or feedback here, I will go through a. Uh, some of the questions that we have already here. Okay, thank you for sharing your experience using Nearport. You're welcome. Sharing some mind map. Yes, you can do this. Interesting so far. Thank you. I hope uh, you can uh, explore this further. So you will be uh, more excited in using Nearport. Okay, this seems cool. Wonder how it's similar or not similar with blank space. Um, well, I would say it's different. It's different. Okay. Um, Blend space, uh, yes, you can have quiz in between the, the, the what we call it, huh? uh, the lesson or the topics, yeah? But uh, you can do the synchronous lesson like this one, okay? Blend space is more for asynchronous, okay? So you share the, the lesson, with your students and they study the lessons on their own okay and then they answer the questions uh give feedback or comments uh, on the blend space um but it's not for synchronous lesson like this one okay a uh, student will love it yes i'm sure they will love it i've been uh using this with my students and they really love it nearport is fun definitely we'll try it yes yes please Good insights on Nearport. Thank you for sharing. Okay, it's a wonderful tool. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, hopefully you can uh, explore it further. Okay, can we do or set in-depth assessment between quizzes? In-depth assessment. Okay, perhaps uh, the owner of these questions, if you can uh, elaborate further, what do you mean by in-depth assessment? What, what you plan to do? Say yes, yes. Maybe uh, we would like to encourage students to answer more, give more answer. Okay. Well, um, yeah, you can do that. So, meaning that, uh, for me, uh, how deep is the assessment is really depends on how you design the lesson, on how you design the questions, on how you, um, you know. Uh, set the activities. Okay, for example, I would say that open-ended questions would be great for in-depth assessment. Okay, because they will have more uh, rooms uh, to talk about the the questions that you ask. Okay, other than that, for the um, multiple choice questions, you can also do um, a 
great assessment if you really design the items well. Well, I think we have uh, experts in assessment here. If you can give feedback about that, perhaps. Okay. Seems like we can create a complete class using just Nearport. We don't need to sit, skip around different tools. Yes, that's what, uh, that's what I talked about uh, just now, where everything is like under one roof. Okay, you don't have to uh, stop and go to Polaf, you don't have to open Padlet, you don't have to uh, open Mentimeter or things like that. But I'm not saying that those tools are not good, they are all very good. Okay, but in Nearport, we can easily uh, do almost similar activities and back together with our uh, lessons, yeah, with the slides and everything. Okay. Wisely, you I'm sure subscribe this to yes, yes, please. Mm. <laughs> I would love to have that as well. But I think with the free account, that's already enough for us to conduct uh, remote learning for with our students. So please have a try. And if it's really good and beneficial, then maybe we can we can yeah, we can suggest uh for you to subscribe. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Teacher, one more question. Can we add one slide at a time? It asks to upload my PowerPoint, but I don't want all the slides. Well, yes, yes, I'll show you uh, a bit later, okay, on that. Uh, that's, that's an advanced uh, participants, good, good. Nice and suitable for 21st century learning. Yes, yes, we don't have, we don't need a class anymore. We can just do uh, this kind of lessons like we're doing now, okay? Uh, okay, anything else? Okay, we are almost uh, one hour already with the simulation. I think we have to be uh, a bit, uh, okay, uh, quick now. Okay, if no other questions, uh, perhaps later you want to drop your questions in the chat box, that, that's fine. Okay, we go to the next slide. Okay, I think we are almost uh, come to the end of the simulation. So this is just a summary of what I've uh, shared just now, yeah? So by using Nearport, we can actually help to engage our students uh, by combining the slides, yeah? So for example, if we have the PowerPoint slides, uh, PDFs, files or images files, we can combine those and create a new lesson together with multimedia elements like what we did just now. We can have um, internet contents or maybe links to the YouTube. And actually we can also narrate the slides, add audio to the slides, and then we can have the assessment tool. Okay, so that's what we have done just now. We have uh, conducted the quiz and also open-ended questions. And another beauty of Nearport is you can actually add a spontaneous activity. Okay, if you can look at my uh, screen sharing here, on top of the right, uh, yeah, there's an add activity button here. And when you click on it, it will allow you to actually just share web content on the spot create open-ended questions on the spot, draw it, slide, insert slides, or throw and false questions. Okay, perhaps I can try this, okay, the draw it uh, function. Okay, maybe, um, okay, there's nothing cognitive about this activity, but uh, well, it's just for fun. And maybe uh, you want to uh, get the attentions of the students back after like, oh, it's already one hour. Now, oh, we have, let's do something, okay? So, for example, uh, please draw your face expressions on how you feel now. Okay, after one hour of simulations, how, how do you feel now? Can you draw uh, the face expressions on that? I'm sharing it and it will push to your device that asks you to draw your face expression on how you feel now. Okay, I'll give you some time.
Okay, see, so um, we are actually uh, from time to time checking on our students whether whether they are still with us or not, whether they are alert with us or not. Okay, so that's kind of things that uh, we can do actually using a uh, Nearpod. Okay, so uh, I think I won't I won't wait for everybody to to uh, to draw, but if you want. Uh, you can you can still uh, continue it. Mm. Happy, happy, yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. Okay, so I hope that uh, you are get the uh, gist of what Neopod is all about. So that later after this, uh, we will do the demonstration, and uh, you can actually just um, kind of like design what you want to do with your own lesson. All right. So once we have done with the lesson, so because this is like the end of the slides, yeah, the end of the lesson. So as an instructor, we will end the lesson and we can actually have a report here. But normally as an instructor, we won't look at the report during the lesson. Yeah, because that will uh, distract the students. Okay, so we'll just end the lesson and then later we can have a look at the report. Okay, we can always go back to the report our previous lesson okay so i will end the session so when i end the session you will be locked out yeah uh, from the near port as well on your device okay so on your device device it will appear session ended okay all right so we have done the first part of the workshop today which is the simulation Okay, now we are going to the second part of the um, workshop, which is the demonstrations of how we can do the similar lessons that I have uh, conducted just now with our students. Okay, before that, let me uh, log out from my import account first so that I can show you where we should start with. Okay, so to start with the Nearport, we can go to nearport.com. Okay, just uh, go to your web browser and key in nearport.com. Yeah. Okay, so when you go to nearport.com, you will have this uh, interface. Sometimes it been changing yeah, from time to time, but normally it will have sign up for free button and login button. So uh, if this is your first time using Nearport, please sign up for free, okay? So when you sign up for a Newport account, you can always use your Google account, or you can use your Office 365 account, or you can create your own, yeah? Put in your first name, last name, your email address, and the password, okay? And then once you get the account uh, registered, you can log in to there. Nearport. Okay. Since I have already have a Nearport account, so I just go to log in and log in to my Nearport account using my Google. Okay. So I choose my Google account to log into Nearport and it will bring me to the Nearport library. Okay. For a first timer, your Nearport library, my lesson here, will be empty okay you won't have this lessons okay because that's your first time but what you have will be this one create your own lesson in google slides or lesson in your pod okay and then uh, if you look at the left side of the screen uh, there's always a home button here so if you feel like you are lost or you are don't know where you are just click on that button so it will bring you back to my library okay and then uh, there will be a Nearport lesson library okay where you can search for lessons from the Nearport library there are lots of free or paid lessons provided by other educators that we can uh, easily choose and use. 
and then we can edit a bit, uh, have some uh, activities in between, and so on. But for today's, I'm not going to show this. You can just do this uh, very easily later. Okay, just go back to my library. And what I'm going to show today is how we can actually create our lesson in Nearpod. Okay, if you have lesson in Google Slides, you can do that. But uh, I'm going to show the, the basic one, yeah, where we create lesson in Nearpod. And we can actually drag and drop our PowerPoint files. Okay, so just now, uh, someone asked me whether we can have like only a uh, few slides from our PowerPoint slide, right? Well, if you have prepared your PowerPoint slides, like 20 slides in PowerPoint, and then you drag and drop here, it will become 20 slides. But you can actually uh, delete some part of it later. That's why uh, if, you, if you realize uh, from the poster that uh, the organizer shared, uh, I requested to, uh, for the participants to prepare like only 10 slides, maximum of 10 slides, because um, it's going to be easier and less time to upload. Okay, and we can insert lots of activities and we can see how it works. Rather than if you like, oh, I want to upload 40 pages of PowerPoint slides, that's going to take a very long time. And perhaps uh, it's going to take hours if you want to conduct a lessons with 40 pages of slides. Like what we did uh, just now, I only have like uh, nine slides for the simulations. And that's already take one hours because we have lots of activities in between. All right. So what to do is uh, upload files. Uh, are you all okay? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So uh, choose a file. Doctor Naz, I have a question. Um, Nikki, Nikki here. Uh, if I, if, if, uh, like, we can't bring one by one slides, we need to, suppose I have a lesson of five slides, but can I insert activities in between the slides? Can I split? Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, I can do that, right? Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to show now. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, great. Um, okay, so, uh, I will upload a file from my desktop. Okay. Mm, okay, I have, okay, this is actually the file that I prepared for this uh, simulation, yeah? Okay, so I, I use this one. Okay. So I have nine slides in that PowerPoint. Okay, that's why I said only 10 slides because, oh, sorry, not this one. Upload one. That's on download, sorry, uh, should be on my desktop. Mm. Okay, near port. Okay, see? A near port remote learning smmtc.pptx. So this is PowerPoint file, yeah? PowerPoint file. Okay, and then I choose it here and it will be uploaded to the near port. And in my PowerPoints, I have nine slides. Okay, so let's see what happens when it's been uploaded here. Okay. I have nine slides from my PowerPoint slides. And when I upload to the Nearport lesson, it will become nine slides as well. Okay. And we can insert activities in between. Okay. We can add more slides or insert activities. Okay. For example, like what I did just now, after my second slide, have poll right so I can go here at 
slide, you can either add content or add activity. Or you can just go here. There's another button here, add slide. And then there's an option whether you want to add content, add web content or add activity. So what I'm going to do now is to add activity. And I want to add poll. Okay. So when I add poll, it will bring me to this uh, page where you have to key in your questions here. Okay. So this will be your poll question. And then this will be your answer. Okay. Answer one. Answer two. And if you want to have more answer, you can add more answer by clicking at answer button here. So it will bring you to another option. Okay. And add more answer. Okay. Uh, for those who are teaching maths, perhaps you want to use the mathematical symbol. Yes, you can. And this is beta, it, which means that uh, it's on trial. So what is free, please have try on it. Okay, otherwise maybe you have to go for gold or premium account to use it. Okay. And then once we are done with the uh, questions and answers, we can actually add timer where we want to have the students uh, to answer the questions on a very particular time, okay, on a specific time that we set. Okay, or otherwise, if you are connecting the uh, remote learning, uh, sorry, the, the synchronous or live lesson like we did just now, uh, that's fine. You can still control it and we can go to the next uh, without putting the timer here. Okay, and you can also add media or video or audio instruction here. But normally I won't do this because uh, I want to reduce as much uh, bandwidth as possible. So I won't add uh, so many uh, media or videos for just a very simple uh, poll questions. But if you really think that you need a video or an image as your questions, then go ahead, you can do that. Okay, so once we are done, save it. Okay, once we save it, uh, we, we can actually look at the whole question has been inserted in our lesson here. Okay, but if you look here, it's been put on the 10th slide, right? But don't worry, you can just drag and drop and bring it where you want it to be. Okay, so for example, I want it to go to the third slide here after the second slide. So just drag and drop it there. Okay, next, uh, I want to add open-ended questions. Okay, go to the add activity again and open-ended questions. Okay, so when we do the open-ended questions, it will bring you to this uh, interface asking you to enter the questions and that's it because it's open-ended questions. So type in your question here. Okay. And then uh, similar to the poll just now, you can add timer or you can add media. And you can also allow students to enable audio recording. This is beta version, yeah? I Meaning it's on trial. If you really want your students to answer this in an audio format, then you can enable this. Otherwise, um, just turn it off. Okay, once you're done, save it. Okay, so when you save the activity, uh, it will go to the end of the lesson. But like what I said just now, you can just drag and drop where you want it to be. Okay, for example, um, I've designed this lesson this way, so it should be here. Uh, this is similar to what I, I show uh, in the simulation just now, yeah? Because I'm using the, the slide that I prepared earlier on. All right. So far, so good. I can 
can hear some voices. Uh, any anyone want to ask questions? No. Okay. Great. Okay. What next? Um, so we have done two activities: a poll and open-ended questions. Okay. Next, perhaps we want to add a quiz. So once again, go to add slide. Uh, this one, yeah. Add slide, add activity, and okay. Just quiz. Uh, please turn off your mic if you are not using it, yeah. Nah, sorry to disturb you. Yes, yes. Uh, can we make a, a, a video in Adpuzzle and put a link here? Can Adpuzzle also? Yes. Can we? Okay. Yes. Can, can. Because Adpuzzle is just a web base, yeah? So you can have the link to the web puzzle uh, activities. And yes, but that's on the web content. Okay, so this is for the quiz. Um, it's very straightforward. Uh, just fill in the quiz, uh, the questions. Yeah, for example, this is question number one. This is answer A, answer B, and then you want to add more answer C and D. Okay, and then if you want to add more questions, click Add Questions button here and fill in your questions too. Okay, and then the options A, B, uh, I mean your 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 answer options, yeah. So this is just for demonstration. Okay, and D. And if you want to add more, add questions here that go to question number three. So key in your questions three here. The option, uh, the answer options A, B, C, and D. Or if you want to have more than that, you can. Okay, it really depends on how you design your uh, items, yeah? Okay, and then once we are done, uh, once again, uh, we can also add timer or media if you like, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, or if you want to du duplicate the questions, you can also do that. Or if you are not happy with it, you want to delete, uh, you just click the delete uh, button here, okay? I think it's very user-friendly. Uh, you can just uh, browse, uh, explore this later. Yeah. Okay, and then save. Okay, before that, please complete the required field below. Oh, meaning that I haven't choose the correct answer. Yeah. So if it's a multiple choice questions, normally we will have one correct answer. So you just tick which one is the correct answer. Okay, and then once you are done, save it. So don't worry if you forget to choose the correct answer because the system will uh, alert you. All right. So we have done the quiz. Okay. So for example, I want to have the quiz. Yeah, here at the end of it. Right. Okay. So uh, what else? Add slide. Perhaps you want to add web content. Okay. This is. Okay, go back. Yeah. Okay. Add slide, add content, sorry, add web content. So web content is where you can enter the website URL that students will see, okay? Uh, for example, uh, I want students to go to UUM website and find some information from the UUM website and then uh, we will do some activities about that. Okay, so you put in the website URL and then you can test the link first okay, to make sure that it's working. Okay, when you feel like, oh, okay, the website is working, that's the right address that I entered. Okay, and then you go back here and save. Okay, so when you save this one, um, will be added uh, to the lesson okay 
So for example, I want to have this like here, just drag and drop. Okay. So that's what we mean by embedding uh, interactive activities and formative assessment in between the slides. Okay, perhaps I can show you uh, one example on how we can actually create our own slides from scratch in the Nearpod. I'm not, I'm not uh, really using this feature, but you can if you want, yeah. Because I'm more, uh, I think I feel more comfortable designing my lessons in PowerPoint first. Okay, and then once I'm happy with it, then I upload to the Nearpod lesson. But one of the disadvantage of creating the lesson in the PowerPoint is that once it been uploaded to the Nearpod, it will be converted into image, meaning that you can't edit the contents of it, the, the text in the slide. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to do the slide from scratch in Nearpod, uh, you can just do it like this one. Okay. So for example, this is uh, topic one. And you want to add image here, you can upload file. Oh, what do I have here? Okay, for example, you have this screenshot here. Okay, so it can be there. Or if you don't want to have pictures, but you want to have a paragraph. Okay, you can do that. Because I think um, it's not very, um, not much option to do here in terms of the layout, okay? But if you feel like you want to do it uh, from scratch in Nearport, yes, you can do that. Okay, um, you can have like, it's almost similar to, to PowerPoint, you can have like, uh, this element, you have one topic here and then one uh, pictures here, two pictures uh, layout and things like that. You can have it here, yeah? Okay, you can change it for elements, something like that, okay? Uh, it's really up to you. If you want to design your lesson uh, from scratch, from in Nearport, uh, you can always do that. And one thing, uh, last time during the, the session that I conduct uh, with UTLC, one of the participants asked about the audio button here. Well, yes, you can actually add audio to your slide or you can audio record your voice. Okay, but because I'm using Safari, it's not uh, supporting my uh, audio function here. So uh, if you are using Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, you can, you can do this. Okay, but yes, you can narrate the slide so that it can have a voiceover or narrations uh, to that particular slide. Example, I'm happy with this one. Okay, and save and exit. Save. Okay, so when you save it, it will appear on the lesson as another slide here. So we have additional one slide here which I created in Nearport itself. Okay. So before we um, share our lesson, we can actually preview it first. There is a preview button here, down here. So for example, we are done with, uh, with the lesson. We have uh, nine slides and then we have uh, three, four activities in between, okay? And then we have add uh, one web content and another slide here. So it's all 14 slides all together and we are happy with it. So we want to preview it. So you can preview when you preview, uh, when you preview, it will bring you to the student view. Okay. Okay. Because I set the preview at the end of the slide. So it's go to the end of the slide, but you can actually uh, start from the beginning, yeah? So this is the preview that your student will get, okay? Okay, 
So once you are happy with it, you can close it. Okay. And then save it. Okay, because this is our first time uh, creating the lesson. So we'll, it will ask you for some details. Yeah. So uh, we haven't put a title for this lesson. So you can put the title of the lesson. For example, here, remote learning using Nearpod. Okay, so it really depends on the, the topic of your lesson. Okay, and then the grade, is it for higher education or for PD, professional development or others and so on. And the subject, okay, okay and then save and exit. So once we save and exit, it will appear in our library. Okay, so I have two slides here. This is the one that I used for the simulation just now. And this is the newly created one. Okay, so what happened if we want to uh, share the lesson with our students? So we have two options here. Okay, if you go to the lesson, Okay, you, you, you mouse over to it. There will be two options. One is live lesson, and another one is student pace. Okay, so live lesson is the real, the, uh, the real time learning or the synchronous one. Student pace is the asynchronous one. Okay, so it really depends on you what you want to do with. If you want to do the live lesson, click live lesson. Okay, and then you will get a code. Share the code with the students. So that's what I did at the beginning of today's session. I shared the code with all of you. And then once everybody uh, joined in the session, I start the lesson. Okay. So it will bring you to the live sessions. And you have to wait for the participants, for the students to join in. And then once everybody join in, you can start the lesson. Okay. What if you want to do the self pace or student pace or the asynchronous one? Okay, just a similar process. You click on student pace here, and then you will get another code. Okay. This is the code for the asynchronous lesson. And if you see here, we can actually um, adjust the expiration date of this code meaning that uh, for how long you want to make this lesson available for your students. So by default, it will be set for 29 days, okay? So for example, if I want to set it just for two weeks, okay, I can do that, okay? And then apply and then give this code to the students. Uh, you can put it in their uh, UUM online learning or whatever learning management system that you use or share it uh, with the students in a WhatsApp group or Telegram group and so on. Okay, and they can access to the asynchronous lessons at their own. Okay, you don't have to be together with them. And there's other uh, way for sharing. There is a link here that you can uh, share with your students as well. So you can copy this link and put it into the uh, learning management system or the WhatsApp group and so on. Okay. All right. Okay, there's some questions uh, popping up uh, in the chat room. Uh, let me let me let me have a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doctor Nas, can you show it? Um, inshallah, if we have time. But uh, for this uh, workshop, actually, I I'm not planning to do the flip grip. Okay. Uh, how do we share the same lesson with another class asynchronously? Okay, uh, maybe I forgot to tell you for the silver account, you can actually share up to 40 students at one synchronous lesson yeah, at one time. But for the asynchronous lesson, it can cater uh, as many as possible. Yeah, uh, there's no limit for the number of the participant for the asynchronous and you can use the same asynchronous lesson for different classes 
For example, the asynchronous lesson that I shared with you today is the same lesson that I shared with other participants that I conduct this uh, workshop with last week. So when I look at that uh, lesson later, I can actually combine both who joining the lessons from the previous session and from this uh, today's sessions. Or perhaps there are some other people who joining in the asynchronous one. Okay. But for the uh, good account, you can share up to 50 students. And the same things, uh, you can just go uh, for as many as you can with the uh, asynchronous one. Okay. So I answered that question from Sue Gohye. Okay, and then from Dr. Mina here. Oh, Dr. Mina, you have been in the previous session. Thank you for joining me again today. Okay, when we click live, it means we will show students what we have prepared earlier. Is that correct? Is it not spontaneous? Uh, well, when we click live, meaning that we are ready to go live. Okay, so when you are ready for the lesson, for example, okay, uh, our lesson is at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So maybe 5 or 10 minutes before 2 o'clock, you can start the live session and give the code. For students but if you just want to run the live session just for yourself that's fine you can have it yeah i mean uh it's kind of like uh, you want to preview it you want to try it okay uh that's fine okay because in our report later we will have a separate report for each lessons and there will appear the time that we conduct the live lesson so we know uh, which lesson that we conduct with our students and which lesson that is only for a uh, trial okay Right. Um, I hope that answer you. Uh, the Mina, the thing, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. We have another questions from Doctor Norman here. Seems like we need to use Webex and Neopod at the same time for synchronous lesson, right? Oh yes. Uh, because when we conduct synchronous, meaning that we want to have uh synchronous access to the materials at a real time with our students. So we have to have a real time platform to support that, okay? Which is the WebEx or Zoom or other video conferencing. Otherwise, otherwise you can actually uh, do the live lesson if you don't really want to talk to your students, you just want them to have a look at your lesson, uh, go to your slide one by one, and then when it's come to the activities, they will answer it. Well, you can do that as well, but um, I think it it beat the purpose. Yeah. So if you want to have it live and you want to have interaction with your students, like what we did today, so it's good to have um, video conferencing platforms such as Webex or Zoom or other uh, video conferencing uh, tools that can support that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, once we have done uh, sharing the either live lesson or student pace, so we are ready to uh, conduct our lesson actually. Okay, now I want to show you on the report. Yeah, report. Okay, for example, okay, before that. Okay, this is the lesson that I have with UTLC last week. And I have set the self-student pace based on this lesson. So if I click here, it will tell me that this lesson has more than one active session, meaning that it's still active. Okay. So this is the code that I gave you, remember, uh, for the asynchronous one, CPFOE. This is also the same code that I gave to the participants last week. So if you were in that um, workshop last week, you got this code as well. And for today's session, this is also the same code for the asynchronous lesson, meaning that uh, you can still join in. Okay, if I click here, I can view the progress. Showing that, um, okay, there are 11 participants that already took part in the asynchronous lessons. Okay, I have like uh, seven from the previous session and meaning that we have another additional uh, five participants, perhaps from today's session. I don't know. Okay, so, and it's still on, yeah? It's 
still on until end of this month. You can try that. Okay. Um, where are we now? Okay. If you uh, if you want to rep the report to be sent to your email, also can yeah. So for example, this is for the asynchronous one. If I click here. I will have a report here and it means that you want this report to be sent to your email. Okay, but I don't want this. So I just take it. Okay, so do you want to leave this session? Yes, you can resume it later. Yes, because this is asynchronous lesson. I can just uh, leave it at any time because the students are accessing at their own. Okay. All right. If we want to look at the overall report, okay, we can go here and it will show you the sessions that we have uh, conducted or the lessons that we have and what activity that we have conducted using that lesson okay for example this is today's lesson interactive remote learning using Nearport. so this is the live session that i have conducted this morning uh, it started from 9 49 a.m yeah with 24 students which is all of you, yeah? Okay. Or this one here, this is the session that I used for last week's uh, session. So it has 48 students, uh, which started at uh, 9, 18 a.m. Okay. And before that, I also have like uh, 13 students joining in. Okay. Okay, this is the synchronous, yeah? Sorry, this is the asynchronous. The asynchronous, meaning that uh, another two person has already joined in. Just now it's eleven. Now it's become thirteen, and this one is still on. Okay, and this is like only one student. This is because uh, my my own. I'm testing on it, so I'm the the presenter. I'm the student. Okay, I, I always do that, so we can have the feelings of uh, how it's go, and we can uh, kind of like do some adjustment. Okay, if we want. Okay, so that's the report. Okay, as I said just now, uh, wherever you feel lost, you just click my library here. So it will bring you back to uh, your account, the main page of your account, which is the library or the lesson. Okay, uh, any other questions? How do you feel? Can can you can you uh, do you think that you can uh, create the lessons? It's very easy, right? Yes. All right. Understood. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I think we are almost uh, towards the end. Okay. We still have uh, time. Um, perhaps if we want to have a look at the flip grid. Well, actually, I haven't tried Flipgrid uh, in Nearport yet because this is uh, kind of like new. Okay, uh, last time when I used uh, Nearport, there's no uh, Flipgrid features. Uh, and I only noticed that there is a Flipgrid uh, features in Nearport when I did the remote learning guidelines, yeah, uh, last three weeks uh, for the HEA. Okay, but we can try uh, on that. So if you want to go back to the lesson that you have created, you can just go to the lesson and click edit here. Okay, there is a function or edit button here. Okay, so click there. Okay, uh, it says that this lesson has an active code. Okay, because uh, yeah, because just now I I I make it uh, live, yeah, but. That's fine because that's only for trial. So by editing this code will be lost. Uh, okay. Okay. So for example, if you want to add slide, add activity and flip grid, just do the same way. Go to add activity and then click flip grid. Okay. But 
Oh, okay. So this show that you must have a Flipgrid account first. Okay, you need to have a Flipgrid account and then you create an activity in the Flipgrid. Then you enter or you give the link here. Okay, so uh, it involves uh, two applications, meaning that you have to do the um, activities in Flipgrid. You create a lesson or activities in Flipgrid. And then once you are ready with Flipgrid, you have the code or the link, uh, you can share the link here. Okay, so once you insert it, it will be embedded to your uh, near point. Okay, I'm sorry I can't show this now because I'm not ready with uh, any flip grid um, activities. Okay, uh, perhaps we can have uh, this on another session where we can have a look at flip grid first and then uh, we can integrate it in near point. Okay. All right. I think um, that's all for uh, today's workshop. Uh, I will uh, unshare my, my uh, stop sharing my uh, screen first and open up for more questions, if any. Okay. How was it? Great, great. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Please, perhaps uh, I can give like another five minutes um, before we end the session. No? Okay, um, I think uh, while waiting for other questions, perhaps. Uh, the admin want to share the QR code uh, attendance uh, back so that those who are joining in after uh, we have started just now uh, can still uh, scan for the attendance. Okay, uh, the rest, um, if you have no questions, then uh, I would like to say uh, thank you so much for participating in this uh, workshop. And I really hope that uh, you can have a try on it uh, explore further and yes um there's someone say that you want to try it right away this saturday class that's excellent okay thank you thank you so much and if you have anything that you want to um perhaps ask me or anything you can just uh, email me citynas at uum.edu.my So um, if there's no other questions, uh, I, I pass back the sessions to the organizer, Dr. Awan. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nas. Uh, we hope we have uh, benefit everything from the uh, workshop. On behalf of uh, SMMTC, we would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Nas and thank you so much uh, for uh, an interesting uh, sharing on the session. We hope to work together again in the future. So for those who did not um, scan yet, you may scan your attendance now. And thank you to all participants uh, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you also to SMMTC for inviting me. Inshallah, inshallah, we can have another session next time. Okay, perhaps I can give uh, some more uh, times for the participants to uh, scan the QR code yeah, uh, before I end the, the session.